Hi. Good to see you here. This is Max from Gaia Pins Company. Gaia Pins manufacture Dilemma Pins, and I am one of the eight salespersons in Gaia Pins Company. Frequently, I am asked by my customers, Hi Max, could you tell me exactly how are my pins manufactured in your factory? Well, I'm thinking, why not make this video to show all the steps. So after you watch it, if you found it is useful, welcome to share with your friends in peace business. And also welcome to leave your comments. More importantly, we encourage you to try Gary Pins as your factory. Okay, let's jump to the production. Every enamel pin production begins with a request for quotation. Requirements such as size, plating, posts, and the basic design are already given. After a few email exchanges, all requirements are clear and a quotation is sent to customer. She is happy with the cost and makes the payment. After receiving payment, an artwork proof like this is sent out, displaying details such as the design, the process, hard enamel or soft enamel, plating requirements, all Pantone solid coated color numbers, contents needed to be printed, the back logo, also the back post location, etc. After receiving her artwork approval, the production begins. The artwork is first sent to a mold engraving machine for mold preparation. For each enamel pin, its front model normally needs five to six different size cutters to finish the engraving, which is a time-consuming process. After finishing the engraving, the front model looks like this. But this pin also has back logo, so back mode is also engraved. As this pin design has irregular shape, it is suitable to use zinc alloy material. For zinc alloy material pins, the pin shape form process is achieved by a zinc alloy die cast machine. The front mode is put at one side of the zinc alloy die casting machine. The back log mode at the other side. When high temperature liquid like zinc alloy is injected into the space between front and back models under high pressure, then the pin shape is formed. After pins are cooled down, blank pins are separated and collected one by one. Now a new lab per pin is born. Then the pins edges are cleaned, burrs are cut for next step. The next step is uh, fix the back posts. On this machine, the back posts are fixed on the back of the pins. After this step, the pin looks like this. Do you like it? For hard enamel pin, the next step is uh, colorizing, then polishing and plating, uh, printing, then packing. So the next step is uh, colorizing. In order to avoid colors mix with each other, at one time only one color can be put on the pin. After finish one color, pins are placed into an oven for more than two hours to make the first color dry. Then take out, place another color, place it into oven again for another two hours. This process repeats until all colors are ready and dried. This is why the lapel pin cost is higher when it has more colors. The more colors, the more labor force, more electricity are consumed. After all colors are ready, the pins look like this. Then they are sent on the grinding machine for initial polishing. Then they are polished on the polishing wheel to make them shine. After polishing, the pins are sent for plating. These pins are required to be black nickel plated. The general idea is putting these pins into pools filled with a black nickel liquid. Then, with the reaction of electrolysis, the positive ion of black nickel is attached on the surface 
our metal dipole pins. After plating, now this pin looks like this. As this pin has two colors, need screen printed. Here is a screen printing process. After screen printing, now the hard enamel pins are almost ready. Next step is a final quality check. After checking every pin has no problem, then clutches are attached, and every pin is put into one bag. Then all pins place one bigger bag and packed with a protective film, then packed into a FedEx bag. With the FedEx delivery label printed, now these pins are to be picked up by FedEx and heading to you, my dear customers.